Hi. Oh. Hi, okay, this is gonna be a big one, I think. So in two days and three hours, I will be doing something that I've never done before. And the reason I've never done it before is because I've been uh, very scared to do it. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm um, very scared right now. For real, I feel like I'm uh, you know, gonna go nutty a little bit. But um, the flights are booked and the emails have been replied to and people are now relying on me, which means I found myself in a position that I've been in before, which is I've agreed to do something that that I am horrified of and therefore ambivalent about doing. But if I don't do it, I've gone too far now for people to not be rightfully uh, kind of mad at me. And honestly, sometimes that's all you need to get the car running on fumes. I mean, it is still possible that I will run away from my obligation. I've done that before. And then this footage of me talking about it right now to nobody will just end up on like a folder on my computer called me talking about that thing uh, that I never did, dot zip. But I plan to, and if, if I do it, the plan for this video is to show you the before, during, and after of this experience. Let me just tell you before I fully explain, I have stage fright, like really bad. That's why I'm doing this right now in in a room where nobody is there besides me and like three ghosts. I shake when I meet a new person. I try to talk during like the support groups I go to occasionally with like 10 people there and my mouth gets so dry and I literally feel like I'm gonna fall down. Whenever I talk in front of more than one person, all I can think about is how each and every one of them separately is thinking, oh boy. Like in a pitying way, in an annoyed way, it doesn't matter. They're oh boying me. And when I look away, they're looking at the person closest to them and giving them an oh boy. They're giving them a who boy. I love to entertain. I love what I'm doing for you right now. But I do it in my room and by myself because there is a long enough delay between me doing it and you seeing it to where I'm not that scared. And if you are like, this sucks, you don't see me getting sad about that. Now I'm doing that by myself. Basically, I did some stand-up in high school. Some of it was good. Some of it was really bad. The last time I was on a stage was in 2019. It was kind of like a stand-up comedy thing that I agreed to do. And it was so bad. I don't even want to tell you about it. And I am so scared of making another one of those memories. But at the same time, something in me wants to try so, so bad. And I've been making music since I was like 10 years old. I'm no Post Malone, but I am Drew Monson. My name is Drew Monson, by the way. If you don't know who I am, hi, my name is Drew Monson, by the way. And I have a friend, a buddy named Cave Town, who actually emailed me in like 2018 as a fan and asked like to produce something for me. And then he became like a big indie guy singer, like, kind of big. Like, you know, not little. And he texted me recently and asked me if I wanted to be one of the openers for his show in Los Angeles. And I said yes, because it sounded fun. And most importantly, it was three months away. And when somebody asks you to do something in three months, you're like, yeah, I'll do that in three months. And then eventually it's actually in one day. And they're like, are you still doing that thing? And you're like, oh no, I said I was going to do that in three months. I didn't say I'd do it in one day. If you can make it three months away again, then yeah, I'll do it in three months. We can just keep keep pushing it three months in the future until I die. And then technically, I think I'll still get credit for doing it because I had planned to. I just passed, so I couldn't. Anyway, that's what's happening. I'm going to play music on a stage. I'm not exaggerating or like trying to be cute. I am scared that I'm gonna faint. I'm scared that I'm gonna shake so much that I won't be able to play the piano and literally freeze up run away, find ice cream, take a nap. That's usually how it goes when I run away. But I'm going to try. Um... <laughs> and I thought I would make it into a little video if you want to go along on the ride with me. I don't know what kind of ride it's gonna be. Could be a Ferris wheel. Could be one of those scary ones that's super tall. And they, they, you know those ones where they like put you in a cage with like one other person and it just shakes the cage and you're also like spinning. I'm gonna take the train right now first to go and see my sister. If that's not, if that's okay with you. So yeah. Let's, let's do it, let's, let's get it, let's get it going. I do actually have to leave right now. I'm gonna switch to my iPhone cause I'm not carrying around a giant cannon. I'm not a college student. I'm leaving. If you're going on a trip and you got problems, you better bring enough pills with you to where when you shake the bottle, it sounds like music. This is just for me to look at later, but I'll show it to you too. Stove off, stove and oven are off. Sink not running. Bathroom sink not running. Drew, it's not. And you have no plans to start running it after you film this video. Turtle is secure. Health looks intact. Door locked. Say it loud for the neighbors or any thieves behind bushes or trees. My dad is driving me to the Amtrak station. I'm not going to show him. Do you have anything you want to say? Just 
that uh, you're a beautiful boy. Me at the Amtrak station. I just bought tickets at the actual station like it was 1957. The lady was so rude, but I kind of really loved it. By the way, this isn't a functional train. That'd be crazy if I just walked up to the train and started leaning on it like I was the boss of the railroad. Wait, that's crazy. Literally, I've been working on the railroad. I'm making a vlog. This is my job. I'm on the railroad. I'm kind of like I've been working on the railroad right now. But I asked, I was like, can I buy a ticket for the 716? And she goes, yes, you can. And then I started going for my wallet and I go, oh, I'm going to San Francisco. And when I said it, she goes, I was wondering when you were gonna tell me where you were going. And if I was in a bad mood, which I'm not right now, you can tell because I'm twirling my ponytail. I would have hated that and hated her. But in that moment just now, I was like, you're a character, aren't you? Literally me at the Amtrak station in front of a dead field. Isn't it crazy that these guys are alive? Like in the same way that I am, sort of, except they don't have no brain. Like when you think about it, these are men, just like you and me. They're just on my nose. Look at this sucker. There's at least one person watching this video right now who's like freaking out. I think this did actually used to be real. Why would they make a fake train? You know that when she was alive, she, you know what she used to say. I know what you used to say. You say, a hug, a hug, a hug, a hug, right? Well, my train's delayed, so I'm gonna do a TikTok dance in the field. Isn't it crazy that I'm just like living life right now? Like this is one of the things you can do in life, like dancing in this field right now and recording it. Like that counts as living your life. Do you think in the future, people will come to this exact spot and like do that dance like I just did? And do you think that just even for a moment, their hair will get greasy too? Now I'm transferring to a bus. I'm on the bus. Yellow truck much? I'm here, baby. I just got to the hotel and I had it in my head like, oh, I'll get to the hotel and I'll like jump around on the beds and be funny. But I was in the Uber and I just felt really emotional cause like the driver was really nice and it was like this gorgeous sunset and I'm in this nice city and Landslide by Fleetwood Mac came on and I just like wanted to cry like I just felt so peaceful and I've been like so stressed out this week and like this month honestly because I'm like scared to do this show and like I'm afraid I'm not going to be good and I just felt like so grateful that I had like <sighs> a peaceful moment because like you don't always get those like you know when it just feels like good for a minute i was just so like thankful for that and that that song is so good and then niall horan's song came on next and i was like seriously can you just play another fleetwood mac but then niall started singing and it was actually kind of good you know what's crazy when you think about it for that uber ride Stevie Nicks was Niall Horan's opener, like I'm going to be Cave Town's opener for the show on Wednesday. That's life. Never mind, I'm not emotional anymore. <laughs> now I feel like you think I was fake crying because I fake laughed, but crying real, laughter, not true. I am a little bit nervous about sleeping so close to my sister and her boyfriend. I ain't ever even met him before. Hey, sorry, I don't mean to be rude. I saw you from across the room and I just wanted you to know that <laughs> this might sound crazy, but I've been looking for the best deal on Guster tickets. Guster is my favorite alternative rock band formed near Boston, Massachusetts in the early 90s. I wanna go see them live, mate. How do I do that? This video is sponsored by SeatGeek. Wait, don't skip ahead. Watch me, I'm gonna do a spin. SeatGeek has over 28 million downloads and they're the number one ticketing app. Sorry, I forgot. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, I thought that I was the number one rated ticketing app. No, your name is Jordan and you dropped out of college. Don't you want to see Post Malone, the greatest dancer of our generation live? Go to SeatGeek. Look at this. I just typed in my favorite band, Guster, formed in Boston, Massachusetts in the early 90s. It shows me all their concerts. They put all the tickets from across the internet on their app. So honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't use this one because sometimes it's hard to choose. They rate each ticket from one to 10 and they also have a coloring system where green is good and red is bad. And you know I'm a green 10. By the way, so are my chairs. I just wanted to show somebody my chairs. Each ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And you're gonna want that. You can return them. I'll never leave you and I'll never forget about you. And you know I came through for you guys. Use my code thank Thanks Drew OMG for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code Thanks Drew OMG. Seriously though, I feel like if you're gonna go somewhere, you might as well use Drew Monson's code and use SeatGeek. They're just the other stuff from the internet and like, I'm nice. I, I mean, I'm not mean. 
I'm not being mean right now. Do you think I look crazy? <laughs> I'm about to go for a walk in another town. This boy driving by himself. I had to leave the hotel room. I don't feel good. I'm so scared to do this show. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. I'm just sitting outside on this bench. Well, it appears I had some kind of breakdown last night. I don't know why I say some kind. I know exactly what kind. My kind. I didn't film with my sister last night because I was tired, but I wish I got it on camera though. She can be so pure sometimes. We got to the hotel and she goes into the bathroom and she goes, oh my God. And she was not kidding at all. She goes, oh my God, there's shampoo and conditioner in the shower. And I was like, that's called appreciating the little things for real in a way that I forgot how to. Anyway, we're gonna go on a boat today. My grandma's memorial was recently and somebody there told me that my grandma really liked this quote when she would do her like meditation and Buddhism practice that you're supposed to say to yourself when you're overwhelmed and stressed out and everything feels like too much, which is just take the next breath. And I really like that because it doesn't even tell you to like take a bunch of perfect breaths or anything. It's like, no matter what happens with that breath, like just do that one. Even if it's like, <sighs> which sometimes it is. And even if it's corny, I'm like trying to just take the next breath right now and like look in this mirror, not in the camera. Sorry, one second, I'm gonna ignore you. I am Drew, I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect piano player. I'm not a perfect singer. I'm not a perfect performer, but I can play the piano and sing and perform anyway in the way that I do. And maybe that'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've got right now, and it's kind of how I'm feeling. Also, when I was really depressed a few weeks ago, I went up, I think, too high with my doctor on my medication that they then told me you're actually not supposed to be on if you're bipolar, which it's looking like I am, and that might be happening too. Okay, I'm putting on my ponytail. My sister's filming this. <laughs> What's no, good? Like the leaving dollars. <laughs> That's me after my show. <laughs> Look at all these toxic couples. All of them got each other blocked now. When Alex tries to go on Austin's Instagram, it says user not found. So this is my sister. Hi. This is her boyfriend. He's pretty Hi. nice. <laughs> I've met worse Lily's boyfriend. <laughs> That's Lily though. And that's Josh. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a skier. Yeah. Can I put a clip of your skiing? Yeah. All right. I've done that. Yeah, beautiful conditions out the bay today. Game plan is to sail out. Two questions for That's myself. good. Yeah. I'm on a boat wearing a man bun. I feel rich. But it only costs $60. The boat ride, not the man bun. Alcatraz. True. Okay, now I'm at the airport. I'm going from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Hi, sorry. I don't know why I did this. Like I knew deep down in my heart that you can't have a protein shake in your luggage. But for some reason I thought maybe they'll be nice and understand that I just want my little shake. And they pulled me over to the side and I said, I know what this is about. And he said, yeah, we can't have this. And he threw it away. I swear he did it extra dismissively. And there was a part of me that was like, that's my protein shake. I just saw a lady walking by on her phone and I swore for a second and I was so excited that she said, oh yeah, Google Gaga. Like she was talking to a baby, but then I realized she said, oh yeah, Google that. But I would have just loved if that was somebody talking to an actual baby and like code switching, just straight up cooing into a phone at the airport. Also, I got recognized in the line before going through security and she said she had just watched my video that I uploaded like three hours ago. I don't think that's ever happened to me. That made me feel important. And it also made up for earlier today. Somebody asked for a picture with me and I felt cool for a second because like Lily's boyfriend saw me be famous. But then afterwards I found out that she had to ask my sister what my name was first. And that my friends is not impressive to a sister's boyfriend. Hi, thank you. How are you? Good, how are you? landed in LA and part of me wants to rehearse right now. I'll just... 
Imagine TSA takes me out immediately. So I just landed in LA like 20 minutes ago and guess where I am already? Cause I know what's good for me. Will. I'm kidding. It's literally a joke. And now you're freaking out and I'm just trying to shop. This is what I needed. Do you think if I buy this, like it becomes true? Like I just, a teaching credential will just like appear in my filing cabinet. This is the realest thing I've ever seen because I love potato products and don't like spending that much time with men. Jay. Goodwills in LA are crazy. Like did John Lennon drop off a load of donations? Rock on mate. What is this? What does it mean? What happened to his head? So I'm in my Airbnb now. I got that keyboard at Goodwill so I could practice here, but it didn't come with a power cord. So I went to Target, but they don't sell those at Target anymore. So then I went to Home Depot. They don't got them there. This is why they shouldn't have gotten rid of Radio Shack. But then I got to the Airbnb and I looked at the uh, Wi-Fi modem and I said, hey, I have an idea. Yanked out the plug. She fits perfectly. But now I don't have Wi-Fi. I'm trying to decide if I should like tell a joke when I'm on stage. I feel like I should say something funny because I'm like the funny guy, right? What if I got on stage, sat down at the keyboard and was like, wait a second, I was supposed to have a banjo. I'm a banjo player. What's this? And then I started like freaking out and slapping out. What is this? What is this? I was thinking, okay, tell me, is this like cocky to even think about? You know how sometimes like performers or musicians get on stage and somebody in the crowd shouts, I love you. And sometimes they have like a funny thing to say in response. I kind of was like trying to plan for that, but I know it's sort of embarrassing that I'm assuming someone's going to scream, I love you at me. Somebody out there loves me. What could I say? I could be like, dad, or I could be like, mom. What if I was just like, why? No, seriously, why? Come up here. Get her up here. Security, I wanna know why she loves me. What if I just went, hi? Now I'm gonna be really sad though if I like planned for that and nobody like, <laughs> nobody says anything. I've already decided I'm not gonna wear my glasses on stage. Like that's not happening. I don't wanna see anybody. Cause if I notice like somebody texting, like, cause if I have my glasses off, I won't be able to tell if the glow from the cell phone is them taking a video of me or just like looking at Twitter. But this, I'm 2020. I know what's happening. You're on Reddit while I'm singing. Cold beer, cold beer. See, I, not even good. Well, that would be kind of funny if I got on stage and started singing and went, wait, what? If I just went, cool, wait, I don't know what that means. I'm not afraid of dying, I'm scared of me. I want to see the sunset, I'm ready to sleep. Ooh, I guess when I actually sing, I shouldn't say ooh. I'm, I'm not going to get every note. But have you ever like been at a concert and like the person doesn't hit the note and you kind of like look at their face to see if their expression is acknowledging that? in any way. Like you kind of want them to go, oops. Every day since I agreed to do this, the first thing in my mind has been, I am somebody who goes through so many mood swings and I feel like I can't even make plans with friends because if they're like, wanna hang out on Friday, my first thought is like, I don't know where I'm gonna be at mentally on Friday. I wanna hang out on Friday right now, but it's Tuesday, you know what I mean? Like, what if Friday comes and I don't even want to hang out with myself? Like, wanna get dinner on Friday? I don't know, kind of, but also who knows? I might be sleeping from four to 9 p.m. And it is tomorrow and it's midnight right now. And I'm so scared that I'm gonna wake up and it's going to be one of those bad days. And I could say that that thought is anxiety and just like shut it down. But at the same time, there's an element of truth there that it might be a bad day tomorrow. And I guess right now I'm talking to my phone while crouched over on the floor and trying to say to myself, slash my phone, slash you, that if it is a bad day tomorrow, I can still do it and that's good enough. You still did it, I don't know. I'm trying to make myself feel better, but that still sounds horrifying. I wanna do good. I want people to be like, oh my God. But I don't know if they're, I don't think I'm that good at the piano. I barely even have fingers. That's not true. That's actually a good way to feel less negative. Like just say something so mean about yourself, it's not even true. Like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I literally don't even have a head. And then be like, wait a second. Eyes, nose, mouth, ears. I ain't half bad. I think I just invented the head, shoulders, knees, and toes song. What if I sang that on stage? <laughs> what if I just did that over? Do you ever have like fantasies of just like, what if I did 
something insane. How long would somebody let me do it until they just like, sometimes I'm hanging out with somebody and I just think, what if I just started screaming over and over again? At my apartment, somebody came over and I just went, ah, ah, like, would they call the police? Would they leave? Would they be like, hello? Drew, hello? Like, what if I got on stage tomorrow and started, like, what if I got on stage tomorrow night and just started screaming? <laughs> would they escort me out? And what if I wouldn't move my body? Like, would they have to pick me up? Would they put me in a stretcher? Would it be on the news? Like, these are all the questions I have. Well, either way, it's time for, this Airbnb is crazy, by the way. I'm gonna show it to you tomorrow. But I'm gonna go to sleep for eight hours and hope I don't wake up feeling horrible. And the video, you right now are just gonna see me wake up and I'll tell you how I feel. I hope it's good. I feel good. I feel so excited. I literally feel so excited. What? That's crazy actually that I've been like crying and scared and like shaking at night for like a month because of this and now it's about to happen and I'm like yay. It just goes to show you that most of your fear and sad uh, scared feelings are kind of dumb. Not dumb but like a little bit worthless and a waste of energy. It's like when you think somebody's mad at you, like you're so sure, you're like, oh, this person hates me. It's like when you think somebody's mad at you, like you're so sure, you're like, oh, they hate me. Like they, they wish I was dead instead of alive. And then they text you like, oh my God, I didn't realize you texted me. I love you. And you're like, life's cool. All that time you thought thinking they hated you, maybe next time I'm scared in that way or this way that I've been about the show, I can try a little bit to be like, what if it's good instead of bad? But then my entire personality falls apart because I'm like the cynical bad boy. Okay, look at this Airbnb. Like that's crazy. There's a guitar on the wall. I saw that guitar and I was like, I gotta be here. I'm gonna show you this bathtub. And like when I tell, like I love baths. I'm the bath guy. And I've always wanted like a big bath, you know, cause I've always had like the standard bath and I have long spider legs. Like tell me I'm not wrong that like there's something scary about this bath. I don't know what it is. Maybe you have to be in the room itself and feel the presence of whoever died in here. But like, doesn't it feel like something wicked happened right there? It's literally a normal bath. Okay, never mind. I don't know. They put this hand on the shelf in case you get lonely and want to feel a porcelain touch. Tap yourself on the shoulder and be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, I thought I was alone. Are you staying here too? What's your name? Oh, <laughs> no, it it it's actually quite nice. Just, it's been a while. Oh. <laughs> I know, I had tater tots. Is this the ghost of Michael Jackson? What's happening? Is this the ghost of Michael Jackson, by the way? What if he was in the bathtub? What if he, he was in the bathtub? He, he. Whatever. I will say though, by the way, and this goes for any place that other people are gonna be in, just get the expensive toilet paper. Like how much more expensive is it? It probably is significant, but it's also significant to feel comfortable in your most vulnerable of spaces. Like I get that, you know, McDonald's has to cheap out because that would be like millions of dollars a year. What if though, what if McDonald's ran like an advertising campaign where they were like, we got the nice toilet paper now. We invested $12 million for you to be comfortable. Now come into McDonald's, use the bathroom, get a hash brown. That'd be better than Grimace. He's not even real. So now I'm gonna take the subway to Guitar Center because get this. When I was asked to do the show, I didn't think about the fact that like, you have to bring your own instruments. I just thought they would like be there. And my piano keyboard isn't in Los, this is beautiful. Los Angeles right now, I don't have it here. So I have to go rent one. I literally didn't realize how ignorant I was about how like concerts and shows those were. The lady from the venue emailed me yesterday. She's like, I just have a few questions. I didn't know what any of them meant. I felt so dumb dumb. There were all these terms. Like she was like, what's your input map? She goes, what's your stage plot? Send me your stage plot. And I was like, I will. I just need to know what that is. I was like, the plot will be that I get on the stage and perform. That's the beginning, middle and end. The end, he lived happily ever after. But she was so nice. I was like, this is my first show. Honestly, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I don't have a lighting guy. She asked me if I had a lighting guy. I was like, I've only ever been my own lighting guy. Like I just turned the lights on. I switch on lamps when I want to. But she goes, everything's gonna be okay. My crew will take great care of you. And that really warmed my heart and like my whole body actually. It felt like expensive toilet paper. Like I just started imagining like all of them holding me so sweetly. Two hours until sound check. Oh my God, Tyler Jacobs. I literally was so scared. Guitar Center, do I really do this? Do I? When did I start clapping while talking? Guitar Center wasn't answering for like a half an hour. And I need an instrument, mama. But then I called the other one that I realized was probably less popular. And daddy helped me right away. Sorry for those who are triggered by daddy. Sorry for those who are triggered by the D word. I try not to say it as much as I used to, but 
Sometimes it slips out. I'm gonna go to Guitar Center. Daddy's gonna help me. Daddy's gonna help me. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here with my Lyft driver. I do YouTube vlogs. I'm, I'm doing a show tonight, so I'm documenting the process of me preparing and getting there. My driver's watching me make this video. I'm here. I'm in the dressing room. I don't know how to talk to people. I just talk to like five different people. I don't normally talk to that many people. They're all like good at their jobs and serious, and I feel like a freak. This is the dressing room. I'm so scared to do the sound check. I thought I would do a sound check. I don't check my sound. I don't do that. I just make sounds. I don't check them first. I just go, all right, that works. I haven't really had the feeling that I'm having right now since I was like 16 and did plays in high school. It's really exciting. It's like the best type of scary. This is an incredible bathroom. Sorry, boys will be boys. Did you know that they put beautiful showers in the bathroom of dressing rooms at concerts? Is that why bands are always like 15 minutes late to start the show? You're like, what time is it? They're like, I'm bathing. Here we are. You really don't have to do it. I'm so nervous. I know, we met over email. You have MSN Messenger. No, I actually looked at the email today when you emailed what? me in 2018. Really? What did you say? You said, uh, my name's Robbie. I produced my own music. I did a cover of your song. <laughs> I was like, who's this kid? And now the power dynamic has totally shifted. Yeah, now I'm better than you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just crazy. Kidding. I'm not. So I just did like a sound check with Robbie. I didn't realize that when you're on a stage in a big auditorium, your voice echoes in a really disorienting way. And that's why people wear those little headphones. And I don't have the little headphones. <laughs> And I'm scared. And he was scared. I have a feeling it might be kind of bad. I'm, I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, God, I hope being nervous is endearing. I just don't want them to say, aww. If one person awes, I'm gonna cry. I felt like I was gonna go violent, but no, I'm just gonna cry. I think I annoyed the sound people. One of my least favorite situations in life is when people are laughing at you together, but not because you were funny. Because they said something about projection, and I was like, oh, should I project more? And they started laughing. They were like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm doing baby boy voice. I'm a little baby right now. Okay, I need to stop pretending I know what I'm talking about. I was doing the sound check, and the... One of the crew people, one of the crew people was like, do you need an instrument line? And just really quickly, I was like, oh, uh, no. And they were like, okay, where's yours? And I was like, you know what? I do need that. I don't know what it is. Can I have one, <laughs> please? Can I have yours? And they gave me one. It's a cord. I was just in a dressing room with like a bunch of people and they were all playing a game. And I don't know, I just, I kept trying to say things that I thought were funny and people weren't laughing. And I wouldn't give up for some reason. Like I, I was like, this one's gonna knock every tower down. And the worst part was I would say something that wasn't funny and then somebody else would like add on to it. So like they heard me and then that, the add on would get a laugh, like a big one. That felt crazy. I feel insane that there's at least some people here to see me sing my songs. I'm like almost positive I'm going to mess them up. I'm just at the point where I'm like, something is going to happen in 40 minutes for 20 minutes and then the 20 minutes will be over. I don't do this, like I don't, I do YouTube videos because you can just keep going. And there's something bad about that because I end up screaming for five hours, never getting it right. But the flip side right now is really scary. It definitely is giving me a different perspective on concerts. I'm thinking about my grandma. I know she'd be excited. I know that my grandma would be proud of me no matter what. I know that's stupid, but that is true. I just feel like such an idiot. Like, I just feel like everybody here is so good at their jobs and like used to this and I'm literally the exact opposite. Like even what I've already just done for me socially with my anxiety, like this is one of the scariest nights of my life. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm gonna say when I walk out, but this is definitely triggering all of my fears that I'm not that good and I'm not that professional and I'm dumber than everybody else. 30 minutes. 
I just checked my heart rate on my phone. Um, it is 140, which is on the high side. But hey, you can't say I don't care. 10 minutes, I'm drinking tea. It was just an idea I had. I'm afraid I'm gonna fall asleep while I'm singing. This is the worst quality. I have a million subscribers. 10 minutes until I play my first show ever. What if like there's a part of me that's like, set off the fire alarm, ruin your own life. Like that's half of me right now. The emergency exit is begging me to just make a run for it and never come back. Never even talk to my family again. Five minutes. Can you see my phone shaking from my hand shaking? Just take the next breath, kind of vibes. The breaths are a little shaky, but it still counts as a breath. Yeah, do it! I'm afraid that my song after 
laughter will sound bad compared to the beat. No! Yeah. You don't know who they are. Yeah, yeah we do. Then, I think the last song I was going to play is Cave Town, Robbie covered it on their YouTube channel. Nice. I know. It's old school. <laughs> My ex girlfriend. I didn't tell her I was playing it in front of a bunch of people tonight, but I'll text her after. <laughs> we still talk. It's not like nobody's gonna talk to I want to like make the finale of this video so positive, but that was hard. Honestly though, I did get comfortable after the first song. I shouldn't have said nobody's perfect. Why did I say that was so, I, in my head I was like, that's so funny. Why would you apologize? Whatever. It's my first time, probably interesting. They're like, even people who hate me, they're like, I went to Cave Town and like, they had this guy before having an anxiety attack. <laughs> I think it was performance art, but he was a good actor. I want to say I'm proud of myself. It's over, that's for sure. I'm sitting backstage.
Hello. And hey, no worries. If you had to guess, if you had to guess, what would you guess? What could it be? Lauren? Dude, yeah. Okay, I know. Anyway, this is who I'm talking to and it's actually making me feel better because I was feeling really bad about um, my performance on the show. Dude. And hey, and hey we all we're having a great conversation. Things. And you look so sweet in it right there. Oh. It's a perfect angle. I'm back at the Airbnb. I I feel better. This has been a bit a long day. I think I'm gonna need like a week to recover. Um some thoughts. I was really scared when I first went out there. Heart rate 150, literally. It went up from 140. Like shaking, not playing the piano as well as I had hoped. Once I was done and I went backstage and then I went out again to play the song I wrote with Cave Town years ago, I was so comfortable and I feel like I unlocked a part of my brain that has been so scared of this, like performing in front of people and has been like, hide in your bedroom, hide in your bedroom. That's the only way you are enjoyable to people. That's, you have to make yourself perfect in order to show yourself. And I wasn't perfect and I still think that people enjoyed it from the people I talked to and that feels really good. And I just feel like a part of my brain is being unlocked and telling itself that it's been wrong for a long time. And like, I wanna go on a tour and like, I wanna do it again. Like, I feel good, I feel wired. This was a really special night. I just feel totally like creatively invigorated and like, I felt so embarrassed and like it wasn't good enough. And then I met a bunch of people that like really seemed to like it. And I know I didn't wanna say it earlier, but like, I am proud of myself. Like, that's okay to say sometimes. I'm proud of myself. That was hard. That was really hard for me, but I did it. I'm thirsty. That's not part of what I'm saying, but it is true. I need water. Thanks for watching this video if you did all the way through. It actually really helped me, I think, to like document and kind of have this diary. It really feels like I'm talking to you, whoever you are. I don't know. It's worth pushing through because like I feel good. I did something I've never done and I'm really glad that I did it. Should I sing the Leave Me A Comment song here in the Airbnb on my little Goodwill piano keyboard? Say yes. Sorry if I'm being annoying, but I realized I forgot to say that I talked like 35 more minutes on my Patreon about something embarrassing that happened uh, after my main performance. It's not like that scandalous or anything. And also the rest of the footage for my performance except for the Beach Boys cover, cause that's copyrighted, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> sorry. Question of the day, do you think cotton candy ice cream is gross? Cause that was my favorite flavor. It was frozen yogurt technically, um, but I would get cotton candy with hot fudge and I'm talking, it was warm. And people, I tell people that somewhat often and they go, ew, what do you mean? It tasted good, it's not actual cotton candy. That would be gross, that'd be a big mess. Real cotton candy with fudge on it. All right, sorry, I'm kind of lonely right now. I'm just trying to connect. Hi, okay, um, I thought that that was gonna be the end of the video, but I had some more things I wanted to say. It's been a few days now, and I've had some time to sort of process and think more about the whole experience. First of all, I feel like I didn't completely convey this in the video. It is so weird to be on a stage. Like, it is so weird to be on the other side of that concert experience I've been in many times. Like, I've been to concerts, I'm not a freak. I was fully planning on taking my glasses glasses off by the way so I couldn't see people's faces but I didn't and I'm actually glad I didn't. It's really interesting to see people looking up at you and you know what's interesting too? I've gone to a lot of concerts and you know when you're at a concert and like it feels like they're looking at you but you can't or at least if you're me you can't really accept that because it's like well why would they be looking at me? Like they're the person that I listen to in my headphones all the time and you know they're like 20 feet away playing a song, they're busy. It looks like they're looking into my eyes, but they couldn't be, they, they can't be. I realized in doing this the other night, like, yeah, they are. Cause I was, absolutely. Like you gotta look at something and they're right there. And when I used to do stand up, I would always take my glasses off cause I was so scared. But it's actually a kind of amazing to see like a sea of faces paying attention to you. This sounds like the origin of me like officially becoming a true egomaniac. Like before I did it, I was feeling really cynical and I don't know about you, but I always prepare myself for the worst. That's how my anxiety works a lot of the time. I really go through the worst case scenario. And it's sort of so we can protect 
protect ourselves, right? And like be prepared, but it ends up hurting us because we think like too much about it and it becomes our hobby. I definitely understand, I definitely understand why people can get addicted to that feeling of being on a stage and the cheering and the screaming and that love feeling. I mean, maybe it's dangerous emotionally for me to call that love. Let's call it intense attention and ignore the fact that I see those two things as the same. I was talking about how like I do everything in my bedroom because it's easier and it's more comfortable and you can't see me and a stage is like too scary and like yeah I got up there and I was really scared but after like five minutes and once my brain like accepted what it was and I had this moment where I was and I had this moment like on stage I remember vividly I was like oh these are just like a bunch of people like they're not mad like they made an effort to come here they're with me they might not love me but they're gonna at least take something as much as they can out of what I'm giving them so I might as well give it to them and I swear like once I made that realization and once I got comfortable I realized like yesterday and this might sound crazy but I think I was more comfortable in a way out there than I am making a video in my bedroom. Because when I'm here right now, like all I can do is guess what you're thinking of me and how you're receiving it. And that's really stressful. And I love having the freedom to like be a YouTuber and basically do whatever I want, but it can be hard because I'm trying to connect and you're not actually there. And I go to like my not trustworthy brain and I'm like, hey, what do they think of this? And it just gives me like the worst of like the greatest hits of the bad things I think about myself and pretends that it's you and I'm like, do they think this is funny? And my brain's like, uh, they think that you're going bald. And I'm like, that's not, wait, I see what all the hype was about. Like life performance, there's a reason. I'm so focused on like getting the most, I'm so focused on like getting the most amount of people that are similar to me to see something and like hundreds of thousands, let's go, let's, let's hit a million. Hi chicken, you know? And I think that because my mindset is like that the idea of like oh I'll go on a tour and maybe a hundred people will be there that's not a hundred thousand that's 100 that's a bad amount of views but it's not like that do you know what I'm saying like each person is worth a lot it's just funny to me that I've been getting it like maybe backwards thinking that I was protecting myself and it makes me think about I don't know, I think a lot of times we're trying to protect ourselves and going about it wrong. It's like when you feel kind of bad and you're like, oh, the only thing I can do right now is sit alone, watch TV, go on my phone, that's all I can handle, and that's not great, but it's like gonna help me because if I tried to do more, that would be too overwhelming and I'd feel worse. But then you don't actually know how to be alone and the alone makes it worse. And the times that you're like situationally forced to do something else with other people around you or like interact with somebody and 20 minutes in you like snap out of it and you're like yourself I feel like in a way hiding in my room and that being the only way that I entertain people versus going on a stage has been like a grand larger scale version of that thing that I just described does that make sense you know what I wasn't gonna talk about this but I did get in my head a little bit because I was look like people were messaging me I was looking through like my Instagram DM requests because people had gone and they were telling me that they liked it and I got one that wasn't negative but they were like I came to see you at the show and I was like blown away and confused by how comfortable you looked up there they were like, you seemed like you thought you were better than us, which I think is a, <laughs> a little bit too far. But honestly, I can't lie. There is a part of you you have to like work against when you're on a stage and people are like looking up at you like you're important. That for a minute, you're kind of like, I'm a rock star. But it's so funny to me because they were talking about how chill I was and how I was like aloof. I think I was just frozen. And also I did make a conscious effort before I went out there. I remember going, you know what? I'm going to try and do that thing where people like pretend to be confident. But it's just so funny to me that they said that because I, when I first got out there, I was like, people can see me shaking. And it's just so weird how you can feel inside versus what people see. By the way, I'm gonna cut to me singing the song at the end of the video from like three days ago. This is a little bit confusing. At the Airbnb. But I do wanna go on a tour. I am looking into like, getting people to help me with it right now. I don't know if it will happen, but if you're interested in knowing when that does happen, I just ask like, um, well, this is a weird thing to ask, but like, I don't know, follow me on Instagram or like keep at least looking at my videos every once in a while because I will announce it. And like, I just want to make sure that people who want to be there 
are there. And even when I did this, it can be hard to get everybody who cares to see something because of that dang algorithm. And I got comments like, you were doing a show? So keep up, not in an angry way. Just like, I want you to go if you want to go. If you don't want to go, that's fine. Don't go, go somewhere else. Go to the store. <laughs> I don't care. Get eggs. I don't care. Get eggs. But it's so funny because I was like, just walk out there like you own the place. And they were like, it's weird because I thought you were going to be like anxious Drew from your YouTube videos. And I felt like I was. And it's just funny to me that I was like, go out there and act like you're not scared. But maybe at least for that person, I went like a little bit too far. And I just seemed like I hated everybody. By the way, if you watch the footage, somebody did say I love you. And my uh, response was thank you. I also do think that this has been a problem for me like socially in life. When I do get, I think, my most scared in front of people, somebody else, uh, please tell me that you have this too, because I'll feel less alone. I think I kind of get, like, jerk face. Like, I sort of go into, like, <laughs> like, I sort of become that. But I don't know. Anyone who was there, I just want to make it clear, like, I am grateful. I hope I didn't seem ungrateful. May Honestly, though? I don't want to be fake, like maybe I wasn't grateful in the moment because I didn't have enough time to process the gratefulness, but right now, I am grateful. That was fun, I want to do it again. Um, thanks for watching this, by the way, if you watched it all the way. Unless you just like skipped through and looked at the little thumbnails that shows you what's gonna happen in the video, or like, ooh, I want to watch the part where he's on a couch. That looks fun. Then still, thanks for watching the couch segment. <laughs> Um, I don't even like the band Sublime, by the way. I just uh, stole this shirt from my dad because I was out of laundry. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Okay, that's the end of the couch boy. <laughs>